I remember watching wrestling before I understood what wrestling was. It was outlandish characters, incredible feats of strength. It became a routine where every single week I would be watching Monday Night Raw. What really turned the corner for me is when I started to understand how it all worked. The scripting, those things, those storylines were planned out months in advance. The matches were improvised, but they knew who was gonna win and how, they just didn't know what ways to get there. And that made me even more fascinated. BPW World Champion. Once you could see all the gears and everything, I didn't care that it was a machine. It made me more interested in how it was made. And it also made it seem like it was something you could do. There was a point in my life where I thought definitively that was what I was going to at least try to do, a career of, of professional wrestling. I grew up in Charlotte, North Carolina. It was kind of like, almost like a hometown sport. There was no stigma for watching wrestling, and so my friends. We all watched wrestling together. We would all chip in because the pay-per-views cost like $35, so we would all chip in $5. This is also kind of around the rise of the internet and backyard wrestling and stuff like that. We thought, what if we did that? We're back live on this edition of Tuesday Turbo. It looks like we're ready for our main event. So we built an actual ring and we started plotting out stories. Ah, look at this. Ah, he tears the ring down, he's so real. I had as much costume as a 14-year-old kid could muster, which was basically black athletic shorts, and then a white tank top, which I did get a BWO screen printed onto, which was the name of the stable, which is like a group of wrestlers that band together, a stable uh, that I had created as the leader of this movement. B-W-O. The character's name was uh, James Real Deal Willems. I started out as a good guy champion, and then I betrayed someone to win the championship, and then from that point on remained a bad guy throughout the tenure of everything. You better watch out for me, and you better watch out for the people that you think you trust. Sounds a little cocky, doesn't he, folks? Ever since I was able to, around like high school or so, I, I've been studying drama. Um, and it wasn't to become an actor, but I knew that kind of theatrics and those that, that skill base was necessary um, for a career in professional wrestling. It's kind of funny how I picked it up, thinking that it would help me become a better professional wrestler. And it turns out it helped me become something else entirely. I'm a producer at Funhouse, been here since the beginning, I guess kind of a founder of Funhouse. We make funny internet videos on a day-to-day -day basis. We have two rooms. Um, one is with our producers and editors who are the ones who take the dumb stuff that we record and turn it into an actual video. And then the, then the other room are the people who are recording the, the primary personalities of the channel. And that would be Lawrence, Adam, Bruce, Elise, and myself. I always try to approach it from the angle as I'm just as shocked as you are um, that people want to watch us do this. Lawrence. Yes? I want to introduce you to the WWE universe. Oh, I'm so excited. Lawrence and I have known each other. We've worked with each other for a really, really long time, but it wasn't until he moved back from Texas to Los Angeles that like we really kind of built a relationship and became like genuinely friends. My very initial exposure to wrestling was that this is dumb and I have no interest in it. And then, basically held like that for a long time. Who is your favorite wrestler? Just say Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan. <laughs> there, I took it. Uh, probably Sting. I think The Rock is probably far and away the greatest wrestler. James and Elise, uh, specifically, are the first people I've known that really, really enjoy wrestling. Just to hear them describe it kind of made me rethink some of the assumptions that I had. It's long-winded, never-ending narratives with the physicality and action of really amazing athletes. I didn't know. I didn't know it was that. I just thought it was like big sweaty dudes throwing each other around. My name is Elise Willems and I work at Funhouse. I'm a producer editor. James Willems is my husband. I think wrestling influences James's personality in that like he gets what makes a good character on camera. Like he knows how to play things up for the audience. For him it was like a huge part of like who he is as a person, like very like formative for him. 
James certainly lights up when he gets to talk about gets to talk about wrestling. I think he just likes the overall ridiculous bravado of it all. Are you a wrestling fan? No, I'm not. You're not, not yet. No. Not Sorry. Yet. Everyone is just a, not a wrestling fan yet. <laughs> I think a lot of it has to do with it, like kind of like Pigpen. It's like there's certain things that I, I'm interested in that swirl around me, and I think wrestling is one of those things. Man, it, if it would be my dream to to perform at least once as a professional wrestler. Just see if I can do it. For a really long time, been curious what it would have been like if I had just slightly turned at that fork and gone down a different path. What would it have been like if I had tried? Instead of taking a vacation, instead of going somewhere nice and relaxing on a beach, I'm going to go to a wrestling school, I'm going to work with someone, and I want to train to see what I can do. Just like watching wrestling, I think it's more fun and more exciting if you have someone to do it with. I just want to be a capable partner to help James kind of live out a fantasy of his. And then entirely personally, <laughs> it would be nice to do something physical that uses my body, show it off to people, and not care that it looks like crap. At my fattest, I was 265, 270 pounds. I'm still progressing to where I want to be physically, but this is kind of the first mental test at least. If I can do that, to me that's success. The Millennium Wrestling Academy that we're gonna be training at is in the middle of nowhere. It's a good two hours away with traffic. It's in Moore Park, which is a very, very, very small town north of Los Angeles. And there's not much else there except this small room that has just enough space for a couple of chairs and a wrestling ring. I'm not a part of the scene, obviously, but I've heard that like hazing and, you know, it's kind of like boot camp with a sport that has such masculinity and grandeur tied into it, I wouldn't expect anything less. I'm just really hopeful that it's not going to be too bad for us. Moor Park uh, is a town of about 40,000 people, real kind of working class, kind of blue collar families. I had two life dreams when I was growing up to be a pro wrestler and a cop, and I've done both of those. And to fundamentally be able to live out the dreams that you have in life uh, is, is something that, you know, I wish for everybody. When we started running here, the reception was real good and they kind of salivated for us. And a couple of times a year, uh, we do the big show at the Boys and Girls Club on Saturday nights, and that's where we draw between, you know, two and 500 people. Are a lot of your students from Moore Park or do they come from all over? Uh, some, some are from Moore Park, and, and those guys are actually the guys that train the most often because they're the closest, but some, uh, our, I think our student that comes from the farthest away is, it drives in from like Long Beach, which would be, you know, over 100 miles away from here to train a couple times a week. What are your favorite kinds of, uh, of students that come into your academy? Really, what it depends on more so than, than anything to me is what their attitude's like. Whether you have experience or not, it doesn't matter that much as long as you realize that we're not the WWE, you're working in front of a local audience, and if you enjoy doing that and embrace doing that, anything else that happens becomes a luxury rather than your expectation. James and Lawrence, they're not coming in here with any egos, they're not coming in here saying, okay, hey, you know what, this is, I'm really popular on, you know, on, on YouTube or on Twitter or whatever. That's not gonna help you in the ring. There's, you could have a million Twitter followers, all they're gonna do is be able to watch you get your ass kicked. Probably when I was 14, my favorite thing was going from being a good guy, uh, a face is what it's called in professional wrestling, and then turning into a bad guy or a heel. I think that's where I'm gonna start in terms of trying to find a character. I think coming up with a character for yourself, the smartest thing you can do is kind of like look inside. You, like it's, as opposed to being like, I'm gonna be a pirate, you should look at inside yourself and say like, what is something you feel like you can amplify? So I'm thinking that I'm gonna go with James Angel. I never liked the good guy watching wrestling, but this is like the, the interesting good guy. What if someone was so endlessly positive about themselves and everyone around them that it became insufferable? I've decided I think I'm gonna try to be the living wrestling personification of an internet troll. I'm thinking like black leather, cool shade, like air quotes cool shades, 
uh, cheesy rap rock. God, that's actually gonna be pretty cool. I just love the idea of playing a character that is that is so convinced they are the coolest thing on the planet and everyone else in the room is just saying, man, you gotta turn that stuff down and take that stupid jacket off. I thought it'd be cool to have like some sort of like thing that he comes out wearing that has like wings on it. Coming up with characters right now for us, having not taken like any bumps or falls or learned moves or things like that, like seems like you're putting the cart ahead of the horse. But I think in this kind of industry, like in professional wrestling, I think it almost makes sense. We are headed to Paul's place, which is pretty important because he's, he's probably gonna be our most influential trainer, I think. He's the one who wants to be the most hands-on. But yeah, that's where we're headed now. And of course, it involves going up to 405, mm -hmm. which is always a beautiful mess. At, at, by the end of this week, I will probably be used to falling on my back a ton, and then I'm also going to be used to sitting in Los Angeles traffic. Paul is a pro wrestling promoter. He is a professional wrestler. He is a police officer. <laughs> like all the stuff. Hey, man. What's up, brother? Hey, how's it going? Paul, nice to meet Paul? you. How you doing? I'm hey. Lawrence. Yeah. Before we get started, I have no idea who you guys are. Uh -huh. um, some of my guys are like, oh, yeah, no, I've heard of those guys. I'm like, nah, I don't know them, and it's probably better that I don't. He's also quite a character. This whole thing kind of came about because I've loved wrestling my whole life. Like, I watched it as a kid growing up. I did backyard wrestling from, like, the time I was, like, 13 to 16. And so it's a chance to see kind of what I'm made of and see, like, thinking back to that 13-year-old kid, like, so it's like, is there a chance he could have done it? Like, yeah, as a childhood yeah. dream that you're, that you're fulfilling a little yeah, bit? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I've always struggled with my weight uh, to the extent that, you know, I've never really enjoyed my body or doing things with it. Okay. Uh, so now that I, I'm kind of getting the diet thing on track, I've lost some weight, and so I'm t kind of coming around to, okay, now I can start to experiment. I can do some of those things that I was kind of previously told myself that I needed to wait until I lost weight to do. Okay. On a, on a grand scale, I, I never grew up watching wrestling for some reason, but you know, after meeting James, he kind of infected me with it, uh, showed me an appreciation for it, because to me it was just, it was just kind of dumpy kids walking around in Austin 316 shirts in right. high school. That was all I knew. Here's the deal with me. Pro wrestling uh, gave me everything good that I have in my life. I committed to it in a way that taught me how to commit to other things in life by putting everything you have into it. And because of that, um, I'm, I'm able to do the things I want to today. Paul is going to be the mastermind of our whole training. Um, we may not actually train with him that much, but it seems like he's going to be the one who's going to be overseeing the people who will be overseeing us. The two guys that I'm putting you up against uh, to wrestle, one is named Mondo Vega, the other one's named Ray Rosas. As the booker, I have to basically adhere to what my audience is going to, uh, going to receive. So you guys will be the good guys. You'll come out and you'll slap hands and high five with the fans and whatnot. And the other two guys are two bad heels. They're from a group called Hate. And basically they bring the hate wherever they can. They'll knock you down if they need to. Do you guys have any other questions uh, before we proceed with, uh, with the rest of the day? Yeah, I've, uh, I think personally may have worked myself into a corner a bit. We were pretty surprised. Our perspective is that no one's gonna wanna cheer for people who don't know what they're doing. The heels are usually the more experienced wrestlers because they're controlling what's happening out there. They're usually more experienced and can, and can feel the crowd's emotion. If you can establish an emotional connection with them, whether they're upset or they're cheering or whatever, that's what's gonna keep them involved. And what you need to realize is if you tried to come out as a heel, again, how many Twitter followers you got? Hundreds of thousands, right? They're not gonna boo you. Paul said, if our fans are coming to see us, people are just gonna be happy that we're there. It made a lot of sense. <laughs> okay, good. And you're actually placing against his head, so it's actually pushing up on your arm to make it look even bigger. I really, I don't know what to expect because I know at the end of the week we're supposed to do an actual wrestling match. The way Paul kind of made this whole training process seem, it seems like it's gonna be very difficult. Cool, brother. Awesome. We're having trouble with just like simple moves. And so we're thinking like if we're having trouble with these and we only have four days left, how are, how are we gonna make this work? Just doesn't seem like there's enough time. So I just got my nutrition plan 
for this week. Paul wanted us to adhere to a diet. He wants to make sure we're as cut as possible for the match, which I appreciate. And so he sent us his meal plan. Liquid egg whites, celery, spinach, ground turkey, almonds, cashews, oats, grapes, salmon, beef patties, chicken, broccoli, fruit, peanut butter, and multigrain bread. It's a diet designed to lean you out and make you look muscular like a wrestler would be, um, which basically means it's nothing fun. Worst thing about this, the food sucks really bad. This is it. It's ready, the, uh, the breakfast of champions here. Got some egg whites and some ground turkey and then four nice celery stalks. I don't know, because boy, that stuff's not fun to eat. This is my breakfast, oatmeal and whey protein mixed in. So yeah, the food sucks really bad. We are headed to Millennium Wrestling Academy in Moore Park, which might as well be the other side of the world. As of right now, it seems like Paul's plan for us is to just meet with every single trainer that he has and for us to get their perspective on every aspect of professional wrestling that a beginner could learn and kind of take it from there. I think we have four training days left, including today. Four training days for multiple training sessions. Yeah, yeah. So. I think it's probably a little presumptive to think that we can get there in a week, but I'm gonna try my best. No reason to do this half-assed, and certainly for the people paying for tickets, they deserve every bit of effort we can give them. <laughs> Are you sore? Uh, no, not really. Yeah. Just, I not know it's yet. coming, so yeah. I gotta roll it out. Not sorry yet. Hey, what's up? Rooster hey, Teeth guys, right? Yeah, what's how's your name? It going? James. James? Yeah. Hi, I'm Lawrence. Lawrence, Brawl and Bo Cooper. Welcome to Millennium Pro Wrestling. Uh, so Tuesday we met Bo. Yeah. Bo's a big dude. <laughs> but again, just like wrestling, extremely friendly, extremely nice, extremely understanding and helpful. All right, when I say go, you guys go, okay? Just get the blood flowing. Good bump. The moves are like anything else. Like, the more moves you know, the better a wrestler, or at least the more visually appealing a wrestler you're probably gonna be. Bo's intense, but I appreciated how he just kind of said, listen, we only have a little bit of time, but I wanna give you this much that you can use. And so we just worked through a sequence with him that he had already kind of come up with that he knows we can accomplish. And he just wanted us to hit it over and over and over again until we nailed it. Let's step up the game, guys, okay? I think, you know, from what I've seen, you guys can do this. So what we're gonna do is have you guys do the sequence, or the spot, uh, headlock, shoot off, tackle, drop down, hip toss, get up the right way into the body slam positioning. So you gotta be, whichever one's giving it, you gotta be ready, because the guy just took the hip toss, boom. Okay. So you're selling. Bam, 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 into it. The thing about wrestling is it's, it's a language. Spine buster, atomic drop, headlock, fisherman suplex, a perfect plex, punches, grapples, throws, everything. It's crazy. So it's weird because you have to learn this glossary of terms and you have to understand that not everything is planned, but the both parties are working together to tell a story in that ring. All right, take your time, let's go, breathe. I want to correct that. And that. Give me a hip toss. There it is. Good, no, relax, relax. Keep going, keep going. Get into a belly slam. Go, go towards him, go towards him. There it is, good. Protect the head, protect the head, switch it, yes. Beautiful, cover him. Hey, pin him, pin him, pin him. Pin him, one. Two, kick out, kick out. There you go, good, man. It feels like the, the routine now is the class ends, we kind of take it all in and we feel really good. We feel really good about ourselves. And then we sit in the car and then get home and then that's when all the aches and pains catch up with us. And then it comes flooding back that it's only a couple more days until we have to do this in front of a crowd of people. Oh boy. It's already a really good start. Who you're portraying is supposed to influence everything you do. Oh, man. All right, shorts, not bad. Oh, man. Oh, my god. Oh, it's got a hood and everything. 
And so even if you're just learning how to hip toss someone, if you're thinking of it through the lens of this character, then you may do it a different way. Since this whole thing started, I think there was a certain expectation that it's just gonna get weirder. Do you have underwear on? No. <laughs> I have a jock strap. At least we're not boring people. Whew. Cool. This was all concepted out to be a heel character. This is the closest I figure I can get to a douchebag late 90s persona. My hope is that even though I'm setting myself up to be unlikable, that the people that come know it's me and they know that it's an act. It's already getting kind of hot, believe it or not. It doesn't breathe at all. Oh my God, look out, Bruce, it's the troll. Ah! The troll's a complete sicko. Absolutely. The troll, would, would have, I would have loved the troll Ew. when I was a kid because the oh. troll just represents everything wrong in this world. Exactly. What do you think, Elise? I like it. I well, like she it likes lot. it, but she doesn't have to run around the ring in it. No, yeah. I mean, the boots, I would be a little bit worried about. If I was walking home alone at night and I saw the troll, <laughs> get off of me, troll. We want to help promote this match. Did you take photos of us? Yes. Yeah? Is that OK? Yeah, sure. Okay. We want to make sure people know we're going to be there and that it's going to be a great show. I'm trying to get artistic with it, but oh, yeah, that's good. That's good. Am I going to find these framed at home yeah. after this? You're going to frame them. Oh. <laughs> we wanted to get fully into character and then announce the show. Okay, that's probably enough of that. We got into costume, did a photo shoot. That's pretty good. That's, that's pretty good. This is going to be the first reveal of our costumes to yeah. people. So I think it's kind of double whammy. That's, I think that's another justification for a flyer. We want to like try and get our fans excited. <laughs> oh, it's already great. So, oh, man. We updated our photos, and then we started tweeting at people in character. Right now, I just have Want to Feel Like You're on Cloud Nine. Witness the professional debut of James Angel. I'm tweeting. Refreshing. Refreshing. What's up? Oh, my god. We're trying to be in character on social media. And once we shipped that promo, we realized, oh, crap. It says April 1st, and everyone thought it was a joke. Everyone thinks it's an April Fool's joke. Some, a lot of people think that it's not a real thing. Yeah. So I hope that that doesn't bite us in the ass. We're headed to Johnny Morrison's right now. John's style is like, the way he wrestles is way more than I think anything we could ever do, like ever. He spins and flips and he's all over the place. So I'm curious where, in his perspective, it, it all starts. I'm genuinely curious, him who's accomplished so much, where he perceives a match starting, you know? The thing is, I know, like, wrestling costumes are, like, supposed to be elaborate. Yeah. But I don't. I think we may have overdone it. I, we're going we're gonna to show these to a guy that normally wears a crucifix on his sunglasses and I'm still afraid of being judged. I guess if we can't face the judgment of a pro, we shouldn't face the judgment of a crowd. Yeah, absolutely. Hi. Hey, what's up, hey. guys? Hey, hey, I'm Lawrence. How's it going? John, nice John. to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. James. Hey, man. John. Hey, how's it going? Nice good, to meet good, you. Good, good, man. Good to see you guys. Yeah, good, good to see, see you, too. Got a box of stuff. Come on in. Cool, thanks. You can get started making fun of this stuff. Let's do it. Meeting Johnny was pretty intense. This is the AAA Cruiserweight Championship belt, AAA Latino Americano Championship belt, QPW Championship belt at the Federation in Qatar. Wow. I have to defend this belt on the 28th against Cody Rhodes. In Qatar? Or yeah. You, yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I think it's one thing to meet, you know, independent wrestlers and trainers and people who are like trying to do it and have been doing it for a long time. Action accessory, deluxe aggression action figure. It's kind of another thing to meet someone who was at the top. Snoop Dogg offered to buy this off me at one point, actually offered me 10 grand for it. Really? I said no at the time. Yeah. Snoop Dogg, if you're watching. <laughs> it's still open. These, these people are larger than life when you watch them on TV, and you expect them to be when you meet them in person, and he absolutely was. This is also a new piece of merchandise mm. that I'm really excited oh. about. World yeah. title belt fanny packs. <laughs> 
That's I'm, awesome. I'm stoked about these. I think That's these are going to do really well. I really appreciated how much effort and creativity he put into these things, because he really understands that it's more than just what you do in the ring. It's kind of the character that you really embody. So you showed us what you have. Oh, no. Now we're going to show you what we have. So right off the bat. Oh, no. Ooh. <laughs> we have Angel Wings. I like it. Right? Okay. I like so, it. So my character, his name's James Angel. Okay. Right? And he's not a religious man, but he is God's gift. To? To everyone. Okay, not just ladies. Not just ladies, to everyone. To everyone, to and wrestling. And he makes sure to remind everyone that that's the case. So mine, uh, I'm intending to be a laughing stock. <laughs> Throw that out there to begin okay. with. Okay, okay, good. Let me, find the, let me find the business first. So here's my jacket. It's a sleeveless vinyl hooded jacket. You should let John try that jacket on. Yeah, here. You okay. Want to try that one on. Yeah, yeah. You're a, you're kind of a jacket man yourself, so. I'm a jacket kind of sweater. How's that? How's that um, feeling? Hold on a minute. It feels light. I didn't realize it had a point. You looked like a wizard. A little bit, yeah. A well, digital wizard, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Then we got some eyewear for you. A wizard in the ring. I like this stuff. Thanks, man. I think you got uh, you Too got far? some good gimmicks. Your job is to put butts in those seats by entertaining, by putting on a show, by spectacle. So whatever, whatever you had in mind, um, I think up. good thinking, but, okay. but more. Yeah. Okay, got it. Turn it up to more. 11. Come on oh, out, check boy. it out. Johnny's training session was, was really good. Do you guys see yourselves doing any, any high-flying stuff, springboards, top rope moves? I am down to try. Okay. So, yeah. One major thing that we took away from him was the personality of the sport. Think about turning up the James Angel volume a little bit more. Okay. So if I'm circling kind of like how Johnny Mundo was, yeah, there you go. What would James Angel do? I'm a serious wrestler. People want to see Johnny Mundo take James Angel to Slam Town. James Angel doesn't give a damn, though. <laughs> it's almost like stunt work. How to sell a throw, how to make a throw look cool for people who are really far away. That's good. Just be you. Well, the troll's got a... Got a little, a little troll swag, some, some waddle, I like that. It's not about efficiently throwing somebody, it's about throwing them uh, dramatically. It's the flailing, it's the, it's the facial expressions. Okay, don't lock up, back away. I like it. Your, your job is to be James Angel okay. or the troll Sakamoto. <laughs> I remembered it. The entire time. Okay. He was very open to try anything. The most important prerequisite to becoming a professional wrestler is enthusiasm. Lawrence and James knocked that out of the park. Aside from that, the squared circle is a dangerous place. And I hope that James and Lawrence don't find that out the hard way. I'm feeling a little sore. I think everything's happened back to back um, with so little time in between that it's kind of, my head is what is the heaviest. It, uh, it feels like this is the kind of thing that you, you know, you maybe want to do once or twice a week, but every single day, twice a day, is, is a lot. How do you feel? Uh, it's a good question. Uh, physically, I'm good and just tender. There were some pretty big slams during that session with Brawl and Bo, um, and those, those stuck with me a little bit. Wrestling is, is like any sort of uh, major contact sport. It's, it's really important to take care of yourself while you're doing it. Yeah, for tonight's practice, I'm gonna, my focus is gonna be attacking the mat, really getting the slaps out. I think I've been a little conservative with that, and that's probably why I've taken some of these hits a little harder than I should. So Wednesday, we're going to class with yet another trainer, uh, another new trainer who we're just now meeting, Steve, AKA Seth Skyfire. Are these the guys? Yeah. These might be James. the guys. James. James. Yeah. I'm Steven. Hey, Steven. Steven. I'm Lawrence. Lawrence. Hey, nice sir. to meet you guys. Nice to meet you. Y'all gonna be wrestlers now? Uh, we're, we're gonna try. try. You're there. You did it. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone that we've met in the gym has said, you have to meet Steve. Every single trainer that we met built up our confidence and really assured us that it would be gonna be good and that we were already miles ahead of where they thought we would be with such little time. Steve started adding on to the other things we had learned. 
So whereas before we had learned technical aspects of things with uh, some other Millennium trainers, and then fanfare and personality aspects of things with Johnny, Steve had it both. And he kind of was showing us how to weave it together. But they both seem pretty athletic. I was expecting less athletic guys. And Gray Shoes has a very good drop kick. Set up. I mean, he's not a fat guy, he's not old, and he's got a good drop kick, which that goes a long way. He can talk in a mic. He can do something if he wanted to. He was just endlessly encouraging, endlessly positive, and really did a great job tying everything together that we had learned thus far. He also let me know that I had an amazing drop kick. The Funhouse office. Yeah, it's right around the corner, across from the kitchen. Great, thank you very much. Yeah. Hi, hey. good morning. So, where would you like me to set up? Probably right in this right here? area here. I don't think James and Lawrence have really done a full eight hour day this week. It's been a huge inconvenience for us. We have to do twice the work that we normally wouldn't have to do. It's sort of like two friends having vacation in front of you. Like they'll just sit there and not do anything because like, oh, my back hurts. Take some painkillers and deal with it and be funny on a video. What's the big problem? Okay, I'm ready. It's a complete waste of time, honestly, that they get to fulfill like some weird childhood fantasy on our time. They're literally getting a massage in front of us. <sighs> When's my, when do I get to do my documentary where I, I go on vacation to Hawaii? You guys should be careful. RT Docs is basically like making a wish, but that always has a twist at the end. Oh. So it's like, oh, I want to be a professional wrestler, but then I'm covered in bruises and I'm in pain all the time. <laughs> <laughs> spent more time in a car than we have actually practicing wrestling. Thursday, we trained with Paul. Fist bump. What happened? I'm sick. Oh, you're sick. OK, that's, yeah, so. that's going to make things interesting. OK. That you happened. have boots. Yeah. You have shiny. I have shiny boots. Shiny gold these are, boots. These boots were purchased for my costume. OK. What have you been training in? I've been training in these. How much like actual support do you have well, when they're on? Wearing, I've been wearing ankle braces. Okay. Every day. Absolutely not, because these are costume. These aren't necessarily yes, for exactly. the ring. Basically, what you're going to need to be able to do is pivot and turn and move um, in a way that you're not going to roll your ankle. But just so you know, there's no injury as of this point that's going to keep you out of this. If you're bleeding out of your lungs, we're going to tape you up oh, yeah. and we're going to throw you in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're going to get through it, and then we'll figure it out after. Yeah, yeah right. absolutely. So, as long as I can get half a breath. Nobody's going to injure you yeah. on a permanent basis. Hurt. Hurt is subjective. You know what I'm saying? Hurt is hurt is your barometer, your pain barometer. Uh, everybody has a different one. So uh, we'll find out what yours is. All right. And it was great because we we finally got some one-on-one -on -one time in a ring with him. What we what we do a lot of time in the ring is you gotta think about things kind of like a shotgun. You know, you cock you cock a shotgun and there's an explosion out. Right? I come here, boom. It's it's that movement is the same throughout everything. And so it's all these specific Beats almost like you're hitting. He showed us some really great, great things and, and built up our confidence. If you guys were just regular students in here off the street, I would be very excited about your potential. In six months, those guys will both be, you know, legit around here. So um, take take some take some confidence in that. And then he left because he has a job. And Lawrence and I decided to stay because we had access to the ring and just practice. We were putting moves together, and Lawrence was perfecting this kick. It was going amazing. I come off the ropes, and he hits me with that big kick. When I brought my face down, I felt a sting on my forehead. And I touched my head, and there was blood on my fingers already. I was like, well, that's not good.
I'm not sure exactly how I made contact, but I did feel his uh, his brow scrape on my, my middle knuckle, and it just went pop, and I was like, oh, that was pretty solid. I thought it would just be like a ah, yeah. but uh, yeah, when he, he raised his head up, there was a yeah. very neat little cut there. Yeah. My hands were in the wrong place. Sadly, uh, the importance of hand positioning had not been made clear to us yet. It's slowing down a little bit. Why is there not a roll of tape in here? I'm gonna check it out. They're, they're just plain gauze. Yeah. It was a pretty long cut right over my left eye, and it was pretty open. It didn't look deep. It's pretty impressive. But it, it was definitely open and it was filled with blood. Ultimately, I made a decision to go to urgent care and have someone who's more professional than I take a look at it. Lawrence was really worried about how Elise would react. If I tell anyone, it's gonna get back to Elise. And I would rather know that it's not serious um, because she's the last person in the world I want to inflict any kind of worry or, or upset, upset nature onto. Every single day she goes, don't hurt yourself. Technically I didn't yeah. hurt myself. Yeah. <laughs> I have a cut over my eye, I'm not gonna die, but I don't wanna say I'm at the urgent care for fear of her thinking something worse has happened. Every time she stares at James's mangled face, this I'm a terribly monster. hideous face. I'm a monster now. I just don't want to be in a situation where I have to decide between whether or not I want a scar or wrestling, even though I guess that's kind of the whole thing, right? But I don't know. I don't know what the answer would be. I really want to wrestle. Yeah. I did it, so it's my fault. Um, had I thought about it more, maybe I could have realized that there's a, there's a reason you don't throw your arms around like crazy. The sad thing is I can already hear, I can hear the commentary of people telling me how I'm not reacting correctly to this. Didn't say I'm sorry enough times or in the right intonation. I don't know. Or people getting mad that I'm even saying that. Whatever. Didn't even, didn't even hit him that hard. It just sucks. But now I know. Hands back. Always. Through jab, jab, kick. <clears throat> How do I look? He said it was a perfect line. Perfectly yeah. symmetrical. Um, but the glue's basically like cement, so. So you're good? I'm stronger than I was before, <laughs> I think is what is actually the takeaway. Yeah. You're welcome. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs>surprised you know only at four days in they're showcasing a lot of sportsmanship james is on fire i, I see a lot of danny divine in him <laughs> that's that's a good thing danny divine's one of our top guys I think, I think it really was probably the lowest point for Lawrence um, because it was the first time he he was taken back. I don't, I don't have a feet working. <laughs> no, it's okay. It would have been something different if we were both performing really poorly and not understanding things and he hurt me. That, that was fine. You're fine. This was the first moment that things started clicking and we were wrestling together. And so I think he felt really bad. I think he felt like it was his fault, which it wasn't. And uh, I think he felt like, oh, well, this is what's gonna happen. Yeah. You know? As soon as I feel good about this, something's gonna go wrong and someone's gonna get hurt and it's gonna be because of me. It's funny because every single day before I left, Elise would always say, be safe. Be safe, be safe, don't hurt yourself.
And then when this happened, I was like, I guess I wasn't safe. I don't think it's that bad. I really don't think it's bad. No, I, I mean, I don't think it's that bad either. Lawrence thought it was really bad. Yeah. He felt really bad about it. Yeah. When I got home that night, she didn't really, she didn't really care. I've cut my legs worth shaving than that. Maybe you should be arrested then. Maybe I should. Benson, do you care? Benson. Benson, do you care? Am I recognizable? Am I disfigured? She's like, well, when I said hurt, I meant really hurt. Like, I didn't think it was a big thing. And so like, I just touched it with my hands and I was like, oh, there's blood there. And then Lawrence is like, Ugh! like reacted really cartoonishly. I thought you guys would have like hidden razor blades and be cutting yourself there anyway in the ring. Yeah, so. we might. Well, we might now. I have something I can open yeah, up. Yeah, open that up. And then, and then we can do put on a real show. Yeah. Because the venue is in a different place, like a half mile away from the actual training facility, um, all the wrestlers have come and are breaking down the ring. A lot of heavy metal and ropes and cables and stuff, put it in a big truck and then drive it over there and then it, we're all gonna work together hopefully to take it out and then yeah. build, the, build the, the ring over there. Because it's a community thing, we wanna be part, participants in the whole process and Everyone's volunteering their time to, to do this. There's no point in just showing up and taking advantage of other people's hard work. Watch me. Reaching down to grab one of the metal rods and a huge piece of wood that was on the bottom of the van just went right into my thumbnail. So I can't, I can't get it. It's, what do you got? I got a splinter under my thumbnail. And I got a splinter under my nail. That's it. Call the show off. Man, it's in there. Jeez. Does anyone have like a exacto blade or a... Razor? Uh, what are we gonna do with this? Uh, no, don't hold this. Somebody's trying to reserve tickets. Ooh, that's nice. Millennium Pro Wrestling. And the show starts at 7:30. Come on. Hey, fun, out, fun House is uh, standing right next to me. Lawrence so is digging a the, uh, splinter weapons. out of his finger right now with a with a saw. It's actually impressive looking. He's digging a splinter out of his finger with a saw right now. Got it. Nice. Le legitimately, and he just pulled it out. So there you go. So he's gonna be there. Lawrence, tell this guy you're gonna be there. Are you coming or not? See? You better get your ass over there, okay? Appreciate it. Yeah, we... Last call! Uh-oh. What is that? Huh? I think it's a piece of wood that embedded itself in my knuckle. What the sh... I don't know how that happened. I both got something wedged under my nail, and then apparently my knuckle scraped the bottom, too. There we go. Okay. You get it? Yeah. I think it's just dirt. Yeah. I'm gonna head in. Okay. All right, uh, I'm gonna go help. Unload. some wrestling videos. I haven't seen any of this in 15 years. And now that I actually know how to wrestle, I feel like this is gonna be even more embarrassing. All of the kids in the street that participated in this, we built this ring. Where did you guys get the materials? Just like around. I can't believe these people let you do this in their backyard. I think the mood tonight is just the calm before the storm. It's pretty much just trying to to feel as good as they can. You thought you were so cool jumping down from the ring like that, huh? I still do. I did it <laughs> earlier today. Get a good night's sleep and mentally prepare more than physically. <laughs> I love that it always cuts back to somebody <laughs> unconscious in the ring. I, like, I also like that there's a dog bed <laughs> back there. This is when it's sort of out of their hands. They can't, they can't train anymore. They're like, this is it. We just want to make sure we put enough of ourselves out there and show people that we respect this and how impressive this is and what it genuinely means to us and give them a good pop, which is to say a good reaction.
There were a lot of people there that came out specifically because Funhouse was there, which is amazing. Being on April 1st, we thought it was, it was a, a joke. joke. Honestly, up until I parked, I thought it was a joke. We live like 10 minutes away, so it was kind of too good to be true. I think they're probably gonna get their butt handed to them. Uh, I don't oh, know. I don't know. They're pretty new to it, right? First match. I'm looking forward to Monday when their dream, my nightmare, has come to an end. We found out our opponents are called Hate. They're Team Hate. YouTube? Who watches YouTube? Are they gonna be able to bring a laptop to the ring? No, I don't think so. <laughs> or they have like a million followers or something like that. <laughs> yeah, they're gonna lose them tonight. They love to be hated. They're bad dudes. You can really identify with someone who believes in themselves. James and Lawrence believe in their ability to entertain people. We spent the whole show sitting backstage, hearing the crowd going nuts, loving the show. That's nerve wracking. You don't want to go out there and then there's silence. For me, success is if we get a reaction from the crowd, that, that to me is total success. You're gonna do great. The following match is a tag team contest. Introducing first, the members of Hate. You guys just gonna come and step into my world thinking it's all fun and games? It's a joke? You're trying to get hits and likes? Nah, the only thing you guys are gonna get is hate. Making their professional wrestling debut, James Angel! And Lawrence the Troll Sakamoto! up hate. You think you're so angry, you're so tough. But James Angel doesn't need hate to win. James Angel uses the love of his fans, the love of his community, and the love of himself to win every single time. You think your team hates? I've been on the bottom forever, so what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? I'm the sidewalk. You can't crush the sidewalk, the sidewalk crushes you. to get into my business, try to pay a little money, get into the ring, and think that they could be all Hulk Hogan. I will not accept you and your friend here as disrespect to everything that I stand for. You want to talk about respect? Do you hear that? Do you hear the cheers? Do you know why they're here? They're here because of James Angel and Lords the Troll Sakamoto! Yeah, yeah. Real quick, real quick, let's just get what? What do you what do you want? Now, there's something I know. A troll fears nothing more than actually coming face to face with the man he's trying to bring down. You're about to live your own personal nightmare. No keyboards to hide behind, no laptop, you're not on your phone. This is the really real world, kid. So pre You know, it's real cute that you think you're in the real world. 
You think you know? Hey, I see the YouTube comment section every day. Let's just ask the crowd real quick. Who, who they're here for? Is it Funhouse? They were veterans. We worked all that out backstage, which was something we were worried about. But when we spoke to them, they know this sport. They've seen a thousand different ways you can tell a story in that ring. And it showed me that they were into it. It was awesome communicating the whole time. I wanted to try something from the top turnbuckle. I wanted to do at least one, one spot there, one real nice shine. I feel like I got to do it, you know? I feel really good. I hope people I feel like it can like be done it. better. But I feel that way about most things I do, so. Do a good job. To us, it wasn't about winning or losing. We wanted to impress people, and I, I, hope, I hope that at least some people were surprised, if nothing else. They were garbage. They're, they were really bad. They were the most impressive piles of garbage I think I've ever seen. Hey, as long as they bring more people to watch me beat them up, I'm all for it. Everyone seemed to have a great time. I don't know how they couldn't, because it was a really amazing show, but it seemed like it was worth it for them. 
You know what? Now that I've actually seen an entire wrestling match, I think it was. Uh, I, I'm actually I'm behind them. I, I think what they're doing is pretty magical, and I support them. Follow your dreams. But whatever it is, whatever stupid dream you have, go handle it. All right. Make sure you do it instead of instead of sitting on your couch thinking about it. All right. This experience was a harrowing one that I would never undo. The timeline may not have been ideal, but the end result was exhilarating. Welcome to Nice Shirt Show, where the person with the nice shirt gets to stand in front and say words to you. It's gonna be a good week, everybody. It's uh, 4.25 a.m. and I can't sleep because my shoulder and my hip hurt, and they're gonna keep doing that for a while. Paul even said it, it's something that, I, that no one can take away from me. and something I've wanted to do for a really long time. And, and I'm, really, I'm really happy that it happened. I'm very happy that James got to look very cool, but at, at the same time, I'm kind of wondering what I contributed. It was nice being there for him, but he was gonna probably look cool anyway. The only major concern is how much more I'm gonna do it. I'm pretty sure I was a like lower level champion. Look at that move. <laughs> I mean, I'm kind of upset with this documentary because James has tasted his dream and now that means that our lives are forever changed. I don't know if this process changed me. If anything, it was something better. I think it reaffirmed who, who I thought I was and who I thought I wanted to be and the things that I love and why I love them. And so that felt really good. It's kind of left me wondering what it was all for, and this sucks. That's my epilogue, I guess, for this whole thing. Chronic pain. I think that, like, in 10 years, we can look back, like, regardless of what happened, like, remember that time we wrestled each other? Like, remember that time you threw me over your head? Like, even if it was terrible, I don't think that there's a way we could view that later on in our lives as having been terrible.